Computing at School is a group of parents, teachers, academics, researchers, industry professionals, anybody who's got a passion for seeing excellence in computing in our, in, a, in our schools. We fundamentally believe that every child deserves excellence in their computing education uh, in schools. We started uh, in 2008 very much as a grassroots, perhaps some have described it as a ginger movement, uh, but bottom up. So it was teachers themselves saying, uh, I need some help or I think something needs to be changed here. I want to do more computer science in my classroom. Where can I go to find some help? Uh, I've got students who want to do computer science at GCSE, but there doesn't seem to be a GCSE in computer science, as there wasn't at that point. Where can we go for help? And certainly the cry was coming up from individual classrooms where teachers were saying, I, I, I feel powerless. What can I, what can I do? Well, one teacher in their own classroom could probably do very little on a national scale. So it's about connecting those teachers up with each other, networking them together, get them talking to each other, get them discussing, get them sharing ideas, get them sharing uh, ways that they were introducing computer science into their classrooms, um, and connecting them, kind of building this community of practice. Um, we started, to say, back in 2008, there were sort of four of us in a room, sort of thinking, well, must be something we can do. And uh, now on our forum, there's 8,000 people who have signed up, and they seem to be signing up anything between 500 and 800 a month. So the, the landscape has changed quite significantly. And in those, in those five years, our sole role was to support teachers that wanted to see computer science be introduced into the, uh, into the classroom, but then also to work at a high level as advocates for computer science as a discipline and recommending to policymakers that computer science needs to be given more attention in our, in our classrooms. Through a number of uh, interesting announcements, publications, uh, talks, um, we've now arrived at the stage where DfE have listened. They have recognised that computer science is important and we mustn't be neglecting that side of a child's uh, education. And so from sep September 2014, the new computing curriculum rebranded from ICT, which in itself represents quite a kind of qualitative change from what had been taught hitherto. Uh, so from September 2014, the new computing curriculum will be introduced, mandatory for all schools that follow the national curriculum, key stage one all the way through to key stage three and four. Um, and there is a significant element of computer science uh, in there. And it's beholden on all of us, I think, as educators and passionate about seeing this, this excellence in, in, in our classrooms to do what we can to support each other, uh, be it formally, be it informally. And when CAS started, one of the first things we, we um, uh, kicked off were regional hubs. Um, I, as a teacher of 25 years standing, fundamentally believe that um, if we're going on courses or wanting support or wanting to help in our classrooms. Well, I, I think you know, teachers teaching teachers is a good principle to be starting off with. I think that uh, it, I, I shouldn't be required to take a day out of my classroom to travel down to London or Manchester or Birmingham to get training. It should be on my doorstep. And if necessary, on my doorstep when I finished work, although I might be tired, well, where can I go to for a couple of hours, have a cup of coffee, some sandwiches, meet other teachers and share what we're doing? And the third aspect of it is that I think teachers are people people. Uh, we deal with people all the time. And I know I'm talking and, uh, on this video for an online course, and I think online is uh, certainly part of the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, I think that being able to provide face-to-face -face opportunities for teachers to meet together is, is fundamentally important. So following that, the first thing we started were a number of these regional hubs run by teachers, uh, for teachers, in their local community, after school, where they can just gather together and each bring something that they're doing in their classroom that they've shown that they've found has worked and share that with their, with their colleagues so that you come along to a CAS regional hub and you can then take away a lesson plan, a scheme of work, an idea that another teacher has used. Maybe even try out something that you're wanting to introduce with your year eight next, ne ne next term. Well, can I try this out on you as my friends and peers and, and fellow professionals. Uh, and they've been hugely successful. So we kicked off with one, then two, then three, and there's now over 80 of these regional hubs running um, around the country. And uh, I can pretty much guarantee that for anybody who is uh, involved in CAS, you will be able to find a regional hub within about 30 minutes traveling time of your place of work. And I think they are the lifeblood of what we're trying to do, distributing the, um, uh, the work, sharing our knowledge with each other as an engaging community of practice. Leading on from the regional hubs, um, it became clear that the informal networking is good, 
and it's successful and teachers appreciated it. But there's also an opportunity here, we thought, to kind of up the game a little bit and build on those networks to actually provide more formal uh, professional development uh, opportunities, particularly harnessing the expertise there is in, our, in the universities around the country who uh, hold the kind of uh, hold the keys, if you like, to computer science as a as a as a discipline, uh, and also education departments in universities. And so we formed back in September 2012 with some support from the Department of Education, uh, what we call the Network of Excellence or the Network of Teaching Excellence for Computer Science. And this is kind of the, the the CPD arm of of the Computing at School Network. Again, fundamentally driven uh, on the three premises that I talked about earlier that it needs to be local by and large it's teachers teaching teachers and it's face to face the opportunity for teachers to come to courses uh, twilight courses perhaps whole day whole day courses run by experienced teachers or run by university faculty members whoever put their hand in the air and said I think I've got something to give here I can I can volunteer my efforts uh, and I can, 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 can contribute in this way. And one of the um, main thrusts of the network of excellence is the notion of a master teacher. Uh, I'm deeply conscious that the term is an interesting one and doesn't quite sum up what was in my mind when we uh, formed the term. It was very much the term the DfE were looking to move to as they began to remove advanced skills teachers or excellent skills teachers, e excellent teachers towards master teachers. Um, so it's not very gender friendly and it doesn't also it also it doesn't come across this idea I want it to be peers connecting with peers it's not a, a master di dispensing pearls of wisdom to apprentices but it's about finding those teachers who have been teaching the A-level they have got a computer science background latterly they've been teaching the GCSE and feel I've got something I can offer my colleagues in this area, I've got the experience. So we have some funding through the DfE to release them out of the classroom for half a day a week to work on this role, to act as the local consultant, the local uh, go-to person for teachers in the classroom. Um, and all the master teachers, we've appointed 70 thus far, our goal is to appoint 400 over the course of two years. It's a, it's a five-year rolling program. Um, so perhaps the, we're hoping at the end of five years we'll have 600 master teachers across primary and secondary and there are application points on a rolling program uh, every term go, go, going through. And uh, it's been fascinating to see how the work the master teachers have done, how that's been received, how they themselves have gained in their own professional development and their own uh, learning and, and, and career development. And the teachers who are attending those courses are pleased, they've uh, established a contact and if they then have further issues, they know they've got this person they can go to for help and advice beyond just pitching up to a course. I'm fundamentally of the view that don't really want people to kind of fly in, do the course, and then disappear again. It's about establishing a network, establishing this community of practice. We have the regional hubs for the informal networking. We have the network of excellence for formal delivery of CPD. But in each community, there are these go-to people that teachers can phone up they can email, they can go to their courses, there's somebody there that they can uh, have, um, that they can get help and support from. In addition to the um, offline work that we do, which I say I, I fundamentally believe in, inevitably we have the technology, teachers are accessing the web, they are accessing the internet, we are finding resources being published in a whole variety of different, uh, in different ways. And uh, we started a couple of years ago uh, an online community with exactly that, that purpose. Uh, moving away from an old distribution list that we used to have in the early days of uh, when, when, when CAS was starting to a, a, a proper online community. It's completely free to join. No, we don't charge anybody anything. And uh, all, but we, what we do ask on the online community is that you identify yourself. So what I think is fundamentally important in a professional network. You sign on. I'm signed on as Simon Humphreys. You can talk to me there on the community. You can see my posts. You can see my picture for what it's worth. Uh, I don't really want people signing on as Mickey Blue Eyes and we can't actually find out who they are. It's a professional embodied network. So you sign up. We do ask for your uh, email address. We ask for your name. Really helpful if people can then provide their location because it's about building this community of network, this, this, uh, this community of practitioners, uh, so that you can see, well, who else in CAS is in my town, is in my street? You know, that's, that's ever so important. Um, and there are a number of conventional online forums there on a variety of subjects. You can talk about what's happening in secondary education, what's happening in primary education. You can talk about how you can get your school network running. Uh, the volume of traffic on there is, is large. It's interesting, it's diverse topics. Uh, my favourite 
forum there. I, f I forget exactly what it's called, but the idea is um, no question is too stupid is the forum. And I really want that to be such an important part of our role, as we have in, in, in our classroom. We want our students to put their hand up and say, I don't understand what you're talking about at the minute. Um, you know, we want the teachers to stand up in our, on our forum and say, um, I really don't know where to start. Can you, can you help me? And they will be treated there with respect um, and they will get answers that will then be helping them in a, in a supportive fashion from those that are just beginning their journey into this new curriculum. And we're delighted that it was involved in our community are some, as others have described, it's kind of the rock stars of computer science uh, at the moment. And they're willing to contribute and share their expertise uh, as well. So we have the whole gamut of experience and background there to help and support. In addition, we run a resource repository. So there's now, uh, this uh, time of filming, something like, uh, like 1,100 different resources, lesson plans, worksheets, ideas uh, that teachers have contributed. And we want teachers just to put up stuff. It doesn't have to feel, it doesn't have to be complete. Um, they don't have to feel as if it's absolutely polished. It's something that worked for you and you just want to share with the wider community. And then other teachers can take that, improve on it perhaps, adapt it, repurpose it, post it back. Um, but it's very much a, a place where teachers can come and collaborate on uh, what they're teaching in the classroom, their worksheets, their ideas, their resources. Um, all the events are published there as well. So the events that volunteers are running, the uh, events that are happening as part of the Network of Excellence through the Master Teachers, that is all there as well. And certainly one thing I would inevitably, I suppose, recommend to uh, everybody is join CAS. It is free, but you would then be accessing this wider network. And what you can gain through that online forum uh, is, of, is of great value, uh, I believe. And then hopefully out of that, um, if you only come across CAS through the online world first, we'll then explore what's going on in the hubs. If you've come across to one of the hubs and you've found us through your offline world, then join CAS and, and connect to that community there because we want you to be contributing, participating and helping each other and learning from each other uh, as we begin to support teachers going forward.